Hi, my name is Philip Moons. I'm a professor of healthcare and nursing science at the universities of Leuven in Belgium, Gothenburg in Sweden, and Cape Town in South Africa. I'm happy to have the opportunity to give this presentation at the scientific sessions uh, 2020 of the American Heart Association. This presentation is uh, entitled Caring for the Child with Cardiovascular Diseases. And I will specifically address the transition from childhood to adolescence. I have no disclosures. Most of the cardiac care providers will take care of adults with, uh, with uh, heart disease which makes sense. But there are also child, children who are having cardiovascular conditions. And most often we are talking about congenital heart disease. Congenital heart disease is defined as gross structural defects of the heart and the great intrathoracic vessels. The global birth prevalence of congenital heart disease is 8.2 per 1,000 newborns. And when we look over the globe, we see that there is some uh, geographic uh, variability with a higher birth prevalence in Asia and a lower one in Africa. In the United States, the birth prevalence is estimated to be 8.1 per 1,000. Congenital heart disease is characterized by a wide spectrum of heart defects, ranging from mild, rather benign defects, to over moderate to complex heart conditions. And therefore, it's no surprise that a substantial number of the patients require surgery or catheter interventions in their childhood. Obviously, the most appropriate place for follow-up and medical treatment during childhood is pediatric cardiology. The treatment arsenal have been expanded uh, hugely over the past decades, and this resulted in an increased life expectancy. Nowadays, more than 90% of children with congenital heart disease are able to reach adulthood. And this is really good news. And for that reason, a lot of hospitals have decided to establish um, an adult congenital heart disease program in order to provide long, lifelong care for these afflicted individuals. However, having pediatric cardiology and adult congenital heart disease cardiology in place, it might give the impression that we can dichotomize the care for people with congenital heart disease. And actually, that's not the case. There is an important phase in between that requires our attention, and this is adolescence. Adolescents with congenital heart disease have specific issues, specific requirements, and I would like to address three of them in this presentation today. The transfer to adult care, the transition to adulthood, and adolescent health. Irrespective of the fact that uh, most people are treated during childhood, they never can be considered to be cured because they remain vulnerable to develop complications throughout their life. And therefore, lifelong medical surveillance is important for people with congenital heart disease. However, we know that there is quite a large uh, group of people that present with gaps in their care. And recently, we did uh, a systematic review, and we found that the discontinuity of care around this transition to adulthood ranges from 3.6 to 62.7. When we were doing a meta-analysis, we found that the pooled estimate was 26.1%. This means that one quarter of our patients do present with care gaps. 
And this is detrimental because there are negative consequences in terms of complications associated with this. Interestingly enough, when looking at the different regions where the studies have been done, we found that the pooled estimates in studies conducted in the US was 34%. In Canada, it was 25.7%, and in Europe, it was 6.5%. It is argued that healthcare system factors are explaining these disparities. And irrespective of these disparities, all centers and all providers need to have methods in place to keep patients in the loop, to make sure that we can safeguard the discontinuity, the, the continuity of care. Regarding the transition to adulthood, there are a lot of uh, centers who are providing transitional care and quite often the focus is on patient education. However, there are some issues that require more attention. We need to understand, for instance, better how the brain of a teenager is working. The teenager brain has particular characteristics that explain why a teenager is behaving like he or she is behaving. And when we are having a better understanding of that, we can um, appropriately uh, adapt our interventions to the needs, to the specifics of this teenager brain. We also need to look at the goals of these teenagers. All of them have their ambitions, they have their goals, they have their dreams and wishes for their life. And if we can adapt our counseling interventions towards what they want to achieve with their life, we can be more effective in our counseling efforts. And third, we need to empower our patients. We need to make them stronger. Research has showed that someone who is empowered is more able to, um, to take care of themselves, to, to perform good self-management. Uh, they have a lower um, healthcare consumption and the outcomes are indirectly uh, influenced in a positive way. So an empowered patient is indeed a patient with better outcomes. And the fact that we can intervene during adolescence, this will have long lasting effects throughout their life. And in line with this, we need to approach our patients from an adolescent health perspective rather than from a cardiac perspective alone. And the approach of adolescent health interview is very helpful for us. And the adolescent health interview is also known as the HEADS. HEADS stands for home, education, act activities, diet, drugs, depression, sex, and safety. There are different questions that are specifically addressing these topics. And when we are using these in our interview with the patients, we get a global and a comprehensive perspective of their uh, living circumstances and their lifestyle. It doesn't make sense when a patient is not adherent due to troubles at home, that we are performing adherence enhancing interventions as long as the situation at home is not addressed. So altogether, this shows that adolescents with congenital heart disease form a specific group with specific needs and they require our specific attention. Let me come to the conclusions. First, adolescents have special needs and adolescents with congenital heart disease have some extra special needs and we need to uh, address these. However, we need to see them more as adolescents than as congenital heart disease patients. We should not only focus on the heart and the heart defect, we should rather look at them from an adolescent health perspective. And therefore, 
all transition efforts, transition programs, transitional care should include the heads because this is the only way to get a good understanding of the situation of the patient and the living conditions. And finally, continuity of care is problematic in one quarter of the patients. And we need to do all our efforts to make sure that continuity of care is warranted. And a good transfer from pediatrics to adult care is therefore of critical importance. Thank you very much.